Let's say each of these three green boxes contained an integer, and our job was to figure out how many of them contain odd integers. Well, if we're allowed to look in the boxes, it's a fairly simple task. We would probably keep a running total of our answer in our head as we opened each box. In this problem, I'm going to represent that running total with this variable name called odd count. Let's open the first box and we see that there's a 3. So I'm going to say that we've got one odd number so far. When we open the second box, we see that it's got a 4 in it. So I don't change the count. So far, we still only have one odd number that we've found. When I open the third box, I see it's a 7 and I know that's odd. So I'm going to increase the odd count from 1 to 2. And that's our final answer. Now the question is, how would we solve a similar problem using code? Here's one potential strategy. We can look at the parameter, in this case a, in our method, and we can check to see if when we divide it by 2, if there's a remainder. And if it is, we identify the number as an odd number and return 1. If it's not, we say we haven't found any odd numbers and return a 0. What would happen with this strategy if we had two parameters instead of one? Let's have a look. Here's a similar method, but one that takes two parameters. We're looking with if statements here to see which ones are even and which ones are odd. And we've enumerated every single case. If they're both odd, we return a two. If one of them is odd, we return a one. Otherwise, we return a zero. Will this strategy continue to work as the number of parameters increases? Let's see what happens with three parameters. In this version of the method, we continue to deploy the same strategy, but with three parameters, you can see that we now have eight lines of code. Do you see the problem? As the number of parameters increases linearly, the number of lines of code increases by the parameter list squared. So for example, when we only had one parameter, we had one line of code. When we had two parameters, we had four lines of code. Here, when we have three parameters, we have eight lines of code. If we had four parameters, we'd have 16 lines, with five parameters, 32. Is this an effective strategy, or is there a better way? Let's go back to the strategy that we started with in this video, where we opened the boxes one at a time and only incremented our count when we found another odd number. Could we deploy such a strategy in code? Let's go back and have a look at that method with the three parameters. Look how much shorter the method becomes, and look how much simpler each of the lines of codes gets. We start by creating an odd counter variable and setting it to zero, and then each time we encounter another odd number, we simply increment the counter by one. Notice that each if statement only examines one variable. At the end, the odd counter variable has our answer and we simply return it. This strategy allows us to only add one line of code as we increase the parameter count by one. That means that with three parameters, we have three if statements. With four parameters, we'd only have four if statements. Can you see that this strategy of counting is much better than using the complicated Boolean logic that we were showing before. This is known as the running total principle in computer science. On certain sets of problems where we're asked to count the occurrences of some phenomenon, in this case, for example, we were counting the incidences of odd numbers, it's often better to keep a running total than to use complex Boolean logic to enumerate through every possibility. Using the running total approach allows our code to scale much better. Now let's look at one final example to show how our algorithm of keeping a running total can scale for really big numbers. What if instead of having three or four or five pieces of data, what if we had a hundred? Look at this method, for example, that might have a hundred data elements stored inside of an array. Notice how we can use the exact same algorithm by first starting off by setting the odd counter to zero and then parsing through the list, in this case an array, and counting the odds before returning the answer.